and must now juggle math and okay. English with Tibetan, Chinese, and memorizing volumes of scripture. I can see you. Uh, okay. Here we go. So, what are you reading? Uh, it's called Yotenzu. Yotenzu. Leo has you jumped into Listening to it, I'm reminded of when I was in like first grade and we were reading. So oh. C spot, C okay. spot, run, run, spot, run. Is it kind of like that? It's doing, yeah. it's kind of a, a rope. Kind of. So let me just ask you, Nadja. Do you ever feel like, yeah, I don't want to do this? Really? Well, get away! Oh my God! So when I grow up, I could teach oh my God. Kind. What? What did he just do to her? But to fulfill the destiny that has been chosen for him, Jalu must soon leave his American life behind to spend uh -oh. his adolescence okay. in a monastery in India. He'll be away from his parents for 10 years. Okay, so today, guys, we I've are going Tennyson, to bring one of John's teachers to help me talk to wrong. his parents about his impending separation. Okay, so what do you think you will send him off to school? To monastery? Yes, actually, according to the Muslims, he has to go to the monastery. Oh. That's the Yes. Not like you have two or three children. This is it. Yeah, this one. And now it turns out that he I shouldn't is want to be by special. him. It's not just your son. He's a child that apparently belongs to the world now. How do you feel? So, uh, it's uh, difficult to send him out in the monastery, but at the same time, he is beneficial for the community. Then uh, they can do a little bit of sacrifice of their love and care. As the date of his move to India draws closer, Jalu must prepare for his role as a spiritual leader. Today, Jalu is going to give one of his first public speeches to the local Tibetan community. He's invited me to come along. Jalu Dolce. What does that mean? Indestructible and mobile. If you say backwards. Say backwards. Something much deeper. 
He's been graced by a power, some energy that traces back through centuries of Tibetan Buddhist tradition. It gives him a maturity that is far beyond his years. He's only nine years old. But he didn't ask for this, but he's willingly carrying that energy into his future. Jalu's path was set for him before he could even speak. But other chosen ones don't receive their calling until later in life, and they choose to follow it even in the face of grave danger. Like this man, who sacrificed his freedom to spread God's word inside one of the world's most repressive countries. In North Korea, Religion is controlled by the state, and Christianity is outlawed. I'm here to meet missionary well, Kenneth Bay, who was held prisoner in North Korea for two years. Why did he get me? I don't understand. Leading Christian prayer groups. I have heard quite a lot about you, my friend. Well, thank you. Where are you from? I was born in South Korea, and so... And I, my family I don't moved understand. to the United States, to California when I was 16. So, you were arrested in North Korea. Why? They charged me with uh, attempted overthrow the government. <laughs> and so I asked them how I did I do that. And they said, do is do is pray oh my and do worship. And the so were you, in fact, stuff. praying and worshiping? In North Korea? Yes, I actually organized a tour uh, into North Korea. I brought in about 300 people in a one year period of time to pray and worship. I felt called to help those people. The Lord said, You gotta be a shepherd. You feel hurt, you're chosen by God. To go in God's way and spread his word. I knew the risk. I knew that uh, they cannot tolerate any of their own religious system. But I feel very certain that I was chosen by God. So they arrest me and they put me in the very remote hotel. And I was actually there for about a month being interrogated uh, from early morning until midnight every day. Can you talk about it? It was extremely difficult. They actually put me in the middle of the room and said, stand still. And so I had to stand still for like maybe five, six hours without moving. If I move, they would come in and yell at me and say, don't move and stand still. Something happened is I couldn't explain. Suddenly my hand was getting warm. My left hand. I would slowly open my palm. I saw something sparkling like good dust. And then, <coughs> this is when I felt that God spoke to me and said, Kenneth, Holy Spirit is holding your hand, standing next to you. Get Ronald, get me.
I'm not diminishing pet love. Pet love. I don't understand. I can hear him, but... Well, I guess I'm about to stop right here.